Hey guys, what's up? So let's get serious. I, we, we don't have long. Jesus is going to come and rapture his children. It's going to be like a thief in the night, the non-believer. This, this world, I've noticed all the signs are around us. All the signs have converged towards a seven-year tribulation. The, the stage is set. I believe there's only two things left. Two things left that will, that will complete the seven years of tribulation. And one of those is going to take place in August with a... Um, called uh, it's an organization it's called bricks right now they have five members and they're looking to add five more members which i believe this is going to be the 10 kings that revelation talks about of the end times the euphrates river is almost dried up Just like it was prophesied to do in the end days. We see the setup for a worldwide famine. We see the setup for a one world currency. We see the setup for a one world government. We see the setup ultimately a one world leader we see every sign that bible prophecy talked about has converged every sign that bible prophecy has said is already set up and it is fixing to come to pass so in august the bricks will meet and add five more people, which will make up the ten kings. I will say this. If I am totally wrong about this, I'm wrong about it. But I feel like the evidence lines up too perfectly. And all the signs line up too perfectly for it not to be. For it not to be time for the rapture. In the start of the seven year tribulation. It's too perfect. Too perfect. So in August. It looks like we're going to have the ten kings established. For seven years. And the reason I call them the ten kings. Because they want only 10 members and their agenda is one world currency one world order one world religion and to have a one world leader too perfect with bible prophecy there is a uh in september there's going to be a summit for a seven year covenant. And this this has been it's pre existing. Did some research. Apparently Agenda thirty is pre existing. But they need this covenant confirmed and put into action, into motion. So I have a feeling we will probably, we, I have a feeling we're going to be raptured before that summit. I could be wrong because no man knows the daytime or hour, but if you look at the evidence, I think we can pinpoint a roundabout time, a roundabout time. But not a Pacific time and not a Pacific day. 
So do not tell me I am saying, oh, we're going to get raptured on this day or we're going to get raptured. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I just have this feeling and I could be wrong because the covenant in September is going to be reconfirmed. And it says that the Antichrist is going to confirm an existing covenant for seven years. Okay. And when you actually do your research, uh, I encourage you to go do your own research with Agenda 30. Go, I, I put a video. I will go ahead and try to link it in the description and tell you guys go watch this. Um, that because it goes into more detail about what is going on and how everything is too perfectly just lining up. I, I personally feel like we will not be here past that summit. And people are, you know, a couple people pointed out that this summit for the covenant of seven years is going to be around the Feast of trumpets I don't think that's a coincidence I don't think it's I don't think it's by chance I I think it's on purpose we know we know the season we're in I, I literally feel like we're fixing to, we're fixing to go home Jesus is going to call us to come home soon. And I mean, I'm literally to the point where I wake up, I live for the day. I'm not living to, I'm not really living for tomorrow anymore. I'm just living for today in today. I do make plans for tomorrow, but I never, but I make them knowing that the, ex, but I make them knowing and kind of in a way expecting and hopefully that Jesus is going to interrupt my plans with the rapture and that I'm going to go home to be with Jesus. And I honestly, I, I'm, a, I'm one of those people that I, I like to kind of stockpile like bath and like toilet paper tissues and bath stuff. And I have got this feeling that just, that it's, it's just like a thing that it's on me that says The, the need for stockpiling, the need for having extra to make sure you never run out. I have a feeling the Lord's just telling me that's a thing of the past. Just buy what you need for right now. Because you're not going to need it later. And, you know... I used to have this urge that um, that I needed to stockpile anyways for the seven years just for other people. But, you know, the Lord's kind of dealt with me a little bit on that. You can't really stockpile. You really can't have your home ready for the seven years because... The Lord really, the Lord has really just put this on my heart and kind of really just shown me that homes are going to be looted. Whatever stockpile you have, it's probably going to be gone and there's not really much you can do. And the Lord just really showed me that a lot of people are going to they're going to lose their homes. They're going to lose everything that they have 
they're probably going to have to, if people give their life to the Lord after the rapture, there's a chance they're going to have to, they're going to have to just take what they can, like in a backpack and just go on their run and find food where they can, find clean water where they can. So there's no way that we can actually stockpile or have things so, so for the rapture. Have so things so, so for at, well, you know, after the rapture for the seven years. The Lord has just really shown me that it doesn't matter what I do today. It will never be enough. For the seven years. As much as that. That hurts me. And breaks my heart. I'm sure it breaks the Lord's heart too. But the Lord also pointed out to me though too. And has reminded me that. I don't want everybody left behind. But they were given a choice. They could either choose me, live for me, which choose Jesus, live for Jesus. Develop a relationship with Jesus. Or reject Jesus and live for this world and face the consequences of what this world will offer. Now, I know right now this world looks like it offers you everything. But in reality, it's a lie. This world, everything that it offers is a lie. People are going to be hunted down like dogs. They're going to be killed just for saying, no, I choose Jesus. So we really, we don't have a lot, we don't have a lot of time left. Sorry guys, my nose is like itchy. We, we don't have a lot of time left. We need to pray for those people who are going to be left behind. Do what we can. Live for today. Plan for tomorrow. Hope, with the hope that we will be raptured and the Lord's going to interrupt our plans. Because we're in that season of getting things in order. It's almost like moving to a new house. Think of it as you're getting things in order. You're going through. You're getting rid of your, the things you don't want. And you're going to take to heaven. Well, you can't really take anything from this world. But you can, you know, like, I'm going to take what I can to my new house. Well, the only thing we can take to heaven is us. I don't even think we're going to have the clothes on our back because it's of this world. So, are you ready for Jesus to come after us? Are you ready to see your new home in heaven? Because... The good thing about our home in heaven is Jesus already has everything we need in heaven. Jesus has already, already has everything that we will ever need. We, we're not going to need anything in heaven because Jesus already has everything that we need in heaven. We're going to be fully taken care of. We don't have to take anything to heaven so we're kind of we're in this we're in in this way we're basically saying like and jesus wants you to hear him hear you say it to him too i am ready to leave everything that i know own and love behind to be in heaven with you jesus because jesus wants Jesus gave us everything, so we have to be willing to give it all up for him. And I'm super excited. 
I cannot wait to go to heaven with Jesus. And I guess I got to tell you something else too. Like other reason why I feel like we are so close to the seven years and why I feel like we are in that time. I know some people don't believe me, but it was 2013. Just me and that woman in Carl's Jr. in McAllister, Oklahoma. The conversation, I may not remember the exact words, but I remember that she told me things that would happen in 2020. Things that would happen around that time period with the virus and with the election. And to hear those things back then was kind of scary, but also something where I'd be like, that's never going to happen. But to see it happen and to live in it and to have the Lord just like bring it on you and make that just repeat over in your head again. How can you deny it's from the Lord? And to see all of these signs lining up. Everything going on in the world. Everything is happening. And another thing that she said is, there won't be another presidential election because something is gonna happen. And I, I am just like, I'm in awe. And I am sitting here just going, we are about to be raptured. Like honestly at this point with the signs and the times and everything just converging the way it is. Everything going on. I truly. I will be surprised if we make it to Halloween. I will be surprised if we make it past September. Heck, I'll be surprised if we make it to September, but I'm going to be surprised if we make it past September. It's just too, it's too close. Too much going on. So, I'm asking you today, please get right with Jesus. And you know what another thing, though? I've, I've had a few people ask me, why do you never share your videos? Why do you never ask for a thumbs up? Why, why don't you ask us to comment down below? Because God will have this video reach who it's going to reach. I want God to lead and guide you to share the video with the right person. I don't want to have to tell you. Because this is not my work. This is the Lord's work. These are, this is Jesus using me for his kingdom, honor, and glory. I don't want the praise. I don't want the honor. I don't want the glory. Give it to the Lord. I just want people to hear what I have to say. And I want it to fall on the right ears of the people who need to hear me. But I'm going to get off here, you guys. You guys have a good day. I can't wait to, I can't wait to be in heaven with Jesus. Alright, bye guys.